Well, we'll go ahead and get started here. I need to share a screen. There we go. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the uh, survival call. I'm going to stop here for just a second. We're going to make a quick adjustment. And we'll fix this. We'll fix the starting and post production because that's how we roll. So um, as you see, I've, I, I, uh, I'll have a guest here with me in just a minute, but let me get us all started and we'll talk about how this all works today. Um, get my remote here. So as always, everybody's familiar with Zoom now. So if you've got a question, use the Q&A box. If you just want to chat, use the chat box. I'll be responding to things in the Q&A box. If you want to talk, if you want to be put online, I'd be happy to include you, and you can ask your question live. Just raise your hand, and we'll do that. Uh, we do have a guest today. We have a brave soul who's going to join us. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Well, let's talk about it right now. So my guest today is uh, Matt Tataro from Event Tech in Baltimore. He's the general manager, and um, we, uh, we, we worked on a project this year. Say hi, Matt. Hi, everybody. There we go. Um, we worked on a project this year getting his website done. So um, I gave um, probably three bits of advice and Matt did the rest and he's going to tell us a little bit about that process. And I've got a wonderful set of questions and I want to you know, thank you for sharing your Friday and actually having to put on a shirt and everything at work today, um, as did I, because we don't usually do this on video. So um, let me see. So, so I mentioned that you you know you reached out for me uh, earlier last year. I think it was probably May or June. Um, you know, looking for some advice about putting a new website together. Um, just give us the background here. Why in the world did you think you needed a new website? Well, our website hadn't been updated since two thousand nine, and it was pretty stale and average looking. I would say um, it was a new it's a, a news based site or a blog based site. So the, the the majority of the main column was our latest news articles, mm -hmm. um, which we didn't write very often. So that was a problem. Uh, when we did tend to write articles, they were always about like the latest and greatest, biggest and best shows. And so the site began to not look became became unbalanced. It looked like all we did was these huge outdoor shows. And I, I felt like we should re kind of rebalance to we weren't really showing that we do, you know, corporate AV work as well. Um, and, and the site was a lot of, of, about equipment, you know, this is the equipment we have. Uh, and so I, th I thought we could do better and start focusing, you know, more on the customer and, and outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, so realizing this, I mean, what's, what's your next step? How do you, how do you actually get started? Well, I'll talk to you because you've, you've done a website before. Right. I had never, never done a website before. Um, so just to get the lay of the land and see, and, and, and what I did then is I just, I went out and I started looking for vendors. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course there are, are thousands of places that are willing to make a website for you. So the way I focused it is I actually decided to keep it local. Mm -hmm. um, I actually decided just to start looking in the Baltimore area and think and see if I could find uh, a firm that was a good fit. So is there, a, I mean, is, is this a Google search? Do you type web developer Baltimore and cross your fingers? It definitely, it definitely started that way. Um, I tried to find some kind of like review sites, you know, are, is you know, like a Yelp kind of thing, but, right. but web developers aren't really on Yelp. Um, so I, I tried to look around to see if I could get any, you know, feedback basically from, from people who had used these sites, but, or from use these companies. Um, and that didn't really pan out so well. So, I mean, it basically is, it, it was a lot, a lot rode on the look of their own websites. You know, if I was, a, if, if, it, if I was intrigued by what they had created for their own website, maybe they could do something good for mine. So let, let me ask you, I mean, did you, did you actually look at developers websites that weren't any good? 
I, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd say not any good, but there were some that were so much better. Okay. It was like, you know, it was, it was immediately appealing. Oh, wow. If I could look like that. Yeah. What but then I also, sorry, I also, you know, then, then started looking at, at competitor sites because mm -hmm. I wanted to know what's the bar, what, what, you know, where's the bar? How do I, how much better do we have to do? And, and where was the bar? <laughs> Ooh, very low. Okay. Um, you know, most of our, most of our, most of the companies we know locally, um, you know, I felt like we could, we could easily, we could easily have a better site than that. Okay. Um, so, and then I went wider and I thought, you know, I, I went looking for companies that are similar to us, but you, you know, who, who we already know are, are the big players. And mm -hmm. I looked at those websites and, you know, where are they now? Mm -hmm. and could we be there? Should we be there? Um, what are they showing? How are they showing it? Um, so it's, uh, it's basically market research. Mm -hmm. And, and, and did this pay off? Did this help you when you finally started talking to developers? Definitely. Gave you an idea yeah. of what you wanted or? Yeah. I, I mean, in, I, I didn't tell them, I didn't give them, I, I did come up with a scope of work. Mm -hmm. what, what I did was I, I kind of put together our current branding um, the thoughts I had about what we wanted for the site conceptually, you know, maybe here, here's what we don't need that we've got currently, but we don't need this in our new site. Um, and, 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 you know, here are some images that I think look like us or, or, or uh, convey the, our feeling, the feeling of working with us. Um, so I tried try to put together just a little blurb about what it should be. And then I shopped that around. Mm -hmm. So what, um, based on, go ahead. So what, so what kinds of firms did you find? Was it the, you know, the proverbial, you know, guy working in, in his apartment who doesn't, you know, get dressed every day or were you finding fancy firms where you're, you're paying for their, their, their super cool office space? Everything. Yeah. Because it, I guess it's, you know, I found everything from, you know, a web development firm that happened to be in the same building as a design firm and they would partner um, com to completely integrated branding, marketing, development mm -hmm. firms. And, and I actually, that's, that's where I landed. I landed with a shop who could do everything. Okay. In -house. Cause there's a design element and then there's a development element and they're not, those are not the same people. Is that correct? Correct. And I didn't, I didn't go into this really knowing that. Right. But, but now I realize that. Yeah. Yeah. And so how did you, how did you vet I mean, how many, how many companies did you actually vet after you found them? Uh, six. 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 Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, but I, but I did a quick, I, I, I mean, I did a first cut on those six pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, based on, based on their responses and my initial conversations with them. Um, I, I had a few of them, I invited a few of them to our office to come again and, and try to get a feel for who we are. Cause I don't, I wasn't convinced that somebody could know that mm -hmm. by either looking at our current site or somebody who's not in the industry. Okay. So I really wanted to show them, you know, this is what we look like. Um, and so a couple of them, a couple of them showed up for, for, uh, you know, and did a sales pitch for me basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and it was really those, it was really out of those three companies who showed up. Um, that was my final, my final list, my final choice. So you, you reached out to six, you had initial conversations and then three earned the right to talk to you more. Yes. Okay. Right. Really. It's, it sounds just like us when we're trying to get business, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the process I kind of know already. So I just on a just yeah. in a different, uh, you know, on you have a, to be the customer for a change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, how do you like being a customer? Uh, <laughs> I, I like it, but you know, I like to get what I want. Uh -huh. um, but you know, it's tough working with vendors. I mean, as we all know, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's your bathroom construction vendor or, you know, our website development vendor, it can be challenging. Um, you know, I, then the challenge for me mostly is, am I making my expectations clear, mm -hmm. <laughs> which you pretty quickly find out when you're not. Right, right. So, uh, uh, so, so talking to these three people, what did, did you end up with three distinct choices? 
Yeah, yeah. Only one of them kind of only one of them was the fully integrated firm. Mm -hmm. And I was I had suspected I was going to go that way. Um, wanting more, uh, wanting more service without going out and finding it, you know, right. just, just having it available, having photography and videography and, and development and, and, uh, you know, marketing all, all kind of in the same house. Okay. So basically you, you got the general contractor who could sell you an outcome to use. Yes to use somebody else's wording um, <laughs> yeah as opposed and, and to they wowed, they wowed me on their sales pitch too you know they brought uh -huh. examples they brought examples of what they had done um mm -hmm. for for other customers um and the, it's funny the thing that the thing that actually sticks in my head is they showed me a branding book hmm. said, okay here here's what we would give you if we you know if we did this kind of branding service for you right. um, and i was very impressed it's something that I've we've, that we've wanted for a long time. You know, basically guidelines about our our brand and and how it looks. Oh, so basically, here's here's how you use the branding elements. Absolutely, yeah. it, it, everything from font colors to he, here's what to do and here's what not to do. Examples of what not to do. Right, and so this so you could use this information. And I know you got a new logo done, and now now you're doing email signatures and. Yep. letterheads and other branded items. Yep. So I can hand this to an art director or, or somebody else. If I, you know, if we go out of house, I can hand this brand book to them and, and my pile of branding assets and, and say go and not worry that I'm going to get a, you know, a pile of crap back. So did, so this approach, did they, did they work with you on your business strategy as well? Or do they take time to understand what you were trying to accomplish? They, they definitely took time to understand what, what we were going for. Um, however, it was a little bit of a struggle to get there. Mm -hmm. um, my, our, our main point, our main concept for the site was we want this to, when a customer comes to our site, we want it to look like their event. Mm -hmm. um, and so we should be showing a variety of events and, and not, and, 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 Kind of everything from the customer viewpoint, right? Um, and the thing is, we they they didn't quite, you know, they didn't quite get it, but initially, but mm -hmm. but we worked together and and got there. Okay, yeah, I remember a couple of times when you reached out to me for some guidance. Um, I hope that was helpful. What, Absolutely. What what assumptions about the process just turned out to be wrong? Um, well, that somebody else could write our content. Okay. That's, that's a, that's a big one for me. Uh, I actually, we, we actually went through a few different content writers. Mm -hmm. Um, one, I kind of had to get, I, I kind of had to say <laughs> the first one didn't work out at all. I right. had to say, I need someone new. Can you please put someone new on this for me? Okay. Um, the second, the second content writer, did pretty well, got some nice stuff going, um, but nothing that didn't need a complete final review, let's say. Mm -hmm. right. There were some gems in there, but overall, um, what they came up with was way too much content. And so my my big kind of final edit up to the launch, I, I, I got rid of probably more than half of the words that were on the site. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, we don't want to read too much on websites, so that's that's no. probably good. And what, what you're, you're, we're showing your website now, and I'm, we're going to click through a couple of things here. Matter of fact, this is probably a good time to do that. Um, let me give you my feedback because I actually like your website. I, I obviously I look at way too many websites, and I have some opinions. Um, first of all, there's there's different type. I'm old school, you know. I'm I'm over fifty, so I'm looking for websites that have um, navigation on the top. That's what I'm comfortable with because that's the way we did it back in 1991 um, when Al Gore invented the internet. Um, but nowadays, uh, websites work more like a catalog book, and you basically scroll down and see things. And so, when we get to your website and we start the the scrolling process, we have a uh, a transformative experience. I mean, we, we're, we're seeing things. We have the background scrolling. 
we quickly get to a client testimonial, which I won't play, but I you know, encourage people to do because it's good. Um, this is a good one. I would hope you'll have more at some point. Did you have to go get this shot? Was this shot specifically for your site? We, we shot it. So yeah. we decided that as, as we were getting close to the end of the, the, the kind of site development, mm -hmm. that a way to quit, instead of asking the marketing company to do it and waiting, we, right. and, and, and plus we wanted to put our, we wanted our account exec, the person that interacts with these people to be the interviewer. Okay. So we basically just went out or we did a couple practices in the office here and then went out and shot this one. Um, and then we shot two more that are, 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 the, are, you know, are being edited right now. Good. And, and, and one of the, one of the questions in the segments that we're going to do at the second half of the show, I'm, I'm going to talk about testimonials from clients and the questions you ask and some formatting things. So, um, uh, maybe you'll hang around and chime in on that. Um, as we scroll down here, we've got, um, call to actions everywhere. So the just press play, which is kind of your tagline at the, at the front, your brand, um, promise, um, actually takes me to a place where I can start interacting. And while it is, I'll click on it here. It's the fairly traditional, um, well, my internet's a little bit slow right now, but it's the fairly traditional contact form, plan your event. However, it's got, it's not just the form. You know, I'm actually, I'm, I'm still engaged with the client here and talking about the things that you do, planning, safety, and dependability. And as I'm looking over your right shoulder and your image there, I see planning, safety, and dependability. Um, say something, we'll, he we'll hear you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these are brand promises. Um, these, are, these are some of your words that you use and incorporate. So this is a nice nice continuity. Uh, the other thing that I valued on this, oh, having the phone home number on the home page. It's so awesome. This is the greatest <laughs> for mobile users. Because uh, this, is, this was, so, so we were sitting in, in some of the initial meetings and I said, well, what, they said to me, what, what do you want this site to do? What do you want the customer to do? Because, you know, a, a, a web development uh, firm, they're, they're, they're usually making websites to sell stuff to, you know, have actual conversions on the site. Right. So for me, I said, well, I, I just want people to call us. Right. I, I just want people to look and make sure and, and see that we're professional and credible and then call us. And so it was very important to me to have um, both the, the phone number and the location right. Uh, right on the top of every screen there. So that yeah. on the mobile, you can just click one click and you're into your map or you're, or you're calling me. Yeah, there's I there's a lot of resistance in in the folks that I talk to about not wanting to put their location on there because they don't want to be pinned down to a region. Which, um, you know, we're it's a global economy. Um, I think visitors to your website are more clever than that. And then hiding you know, the phone we number. We used to think that we we definitely yeah. used to think that we said, oh no, we don't want to be be localized. But the mm. problem then is, you know. We get a call from Las Vegas. Can can I rent four pieces of banjo today? Right. I said, well, I guess you don't realize that we're in Baltimore, which means that the website wasn't working properly. Right. Yeah. So I think those are strong choices um, and counterintuitive choices, but I think they're great. And of course, the call to action is right here on the screen. And then I want to click on something that's important to me is who we serve. Um, because we got to talk about the customers and the customer has to see themselves doing business with you and you, you snuck in the indoor and outdoor events different differentiators here. But the important thing is you talk about who we serve. And so you've got meeting planners and you've got an appropriate photograph. You've got some, you know, you're talking about the in meeting planner language, the challenges that they have and how you help, which I think is great. And then we got, experiential marketers get that call to action in there with the phone number love it and yep. then yep. producers and promoters venues um b2b we we understand how to do business with you and right. a visitor could you know basically get in and one click um verify that they're with the right company but see themselves yeah and see themselves so now they're maybe they will call that phone number or maybe they will use that form. They're confident now that they're not phishing. They actually, they think they know who they're talking to. So I think this is a wonderfully 
um, executed site, and um, I think you 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 chose well. Um, how how long did this take compared to what you hoped it would take? I hoped it would take three months. Uh, it took five. Okay. Um, mainly my fault because of kind of how I structured the process. I I had a window of basically free time mm -hmm. before a busy season. And I thought, okay, let's get this started. Well, that's great, except my participation in the front end is very little. A couple meetings here and there while they get things developed. And it's not until the back end when they really need me. You know, let's edit the content, let's get the right images in there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really think about that. And so yeah. we got busy and then they needed me and then yeah. they had to wait. <laughs> and, I had to wait. and would you, would you mind sharing what it cost and really in terms of what you what it what you thought it would cost when you started out versus what it really cost to get what you want sure um i think i had a pretty good handle on it uh it it the the site itself and kind of everything that went along with it is about forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars um the thing that i was upsold on almost immediately was uh rebranding Right. Uh, we sat down in the first meeting and the art director, you know, looked at me with disdain and, and you know, basically was like, your logo is crap. <laughs> I was like, oh, good way to start. Okay. Can we like, let's assume it's not crap. Can we move on? <laughs> so, right. but it got me thinking and, and they, you know, they quickly, um, they quickly came up with some concepts, mm -hmm. which, you know, is, is appealing. It was a tease and, and, and I got roped in and, and I'm glad I did because, you know, we, we needed something a little bit fresher and it's not a, it's not, I don't really consider it a new logo. It's really an updated logo. Right. Um, it doesn't look exactly the same as our old logo, but it, it can, it keeps some of the elements. Right. Um, which kind of ties it back to, to our history. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you had a very 1990s logo. Um, I think it was basically one color. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> Right. It has been recently. It actually started out in a horrendous gradient, but uh, okay, okay. So, so it, during during the two thousands, it's been pretty solid. But but right. yeah, it had a gradient in there. It, you're right. It was exactly nineties. Two different fonts. Like just, uh -huh. you know, I'd been staring at it so long. I it didn't. You didn't, didn't see it. You were your eye yeah. blind, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, brand blind. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I think this is nice. I think this is lovely. Uh, it it is incorporated. Um, th through the website, I think it's on the homepage, but we see it, we see it manifest itself in a number of places, which is nice. Why yeah, the just right press play, yeah the, the just press play and the play logo, you mm -hmm. know, goes with all of the kind of action buttons, which are, are those triangle, mm -hmm. um, triangular buttons. Um, and, and just press play, even though it's not kind of a, a, a big feature on the site right now, it, Sir, mm -hmm. it just it has the potential we could turn that into a campaign the campaign could be just press play or, you know okay yeah it's, it's multifunction somebody's thought yeah. this through okay so this has got legs yeah yeah um, we've got future capability with this yeah yeah and you've got a you've got a blog on here and you've got ways of doing content um you start off with this yeah. testimonial because it's probably the latest thing here Right. Well, we, you get the full length testimonial back here in the blog where you, well, you only get the edited version up on the homepage. So you're not sitting there for four minutes on the homepage. Ah, right. So you get more of this. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And in the blog, the blog has different um, I the ca categories or content types or something, whatever it is called in Drupal. Okay. Um, so our blog, basically we can categorize posts as, as, as job posts mm. or featured product pages or blogs or testimonials and they all and they have different functions based on how you categorize them nice so it's pretty easy to put content in then you just have, need to know which handles to click on yeah. right so this right. was built in WordPress uh, Drupal Drupal okay um, so nice I want to tell one more thing that I really like about your about us which is generally the page I start with because I'm I'm looking at, you know, somebody sent me an email. I want to find out about their company. I go to about us right. and, and there's your old logo on the building right there. So people get a sense right. <laughs> of it. Um, what we do, our story, which is a, a lovely personalized story about the founder, Eric, 
And, um, and it's, I mean, this is just down and dirty. I mean, it's got the dad's Oldsmobile and the whole bit. So it's a it great is. story. Since but, you can't set off explosives everywhere. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <lots of sparkans. laughs> and I love this. I love oh, our good. team. I like real pictures. I want human beings. I want to know that there are so many companies hide their employees. Oh, I don't want people to find out who my employees are. When it comes to credibility, there's nothing more credible to me than seeing the owner on the page. I agree. You know, I, I got to know that there are actual people behind this and this isn't just, you know, well, that one guy sitting on his bed with his laptop, <laughs> you know, who's put up this yeah, great website. Yeah. For a real thing. Yeah. And so there's, I love it. There's personality, um, this professionally done. Well, well, well done. Um, so getting to the end of this, uh, anything you'd do, anything that you would do differently or anything you would advise us, you know, those of us who need to get a website done to avoid, you know, what's, what's the mistake you can save us from? Um, obviously leave plenty of time, which we already talked about. <clears throat> um, you know, don't, don't have a hard deadline cause you're probably not going to make it. Right. Um, open mind, you know, get out of your rut, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, eliminate those old non-negotiables as you would say. Right. Um, and just listen to what, listen to what they're telling you. You know, these guys are designers or artists or photographers or web developers who have done a hundred websites, you know, listen first before you reject. Um, and, and you know, and I, I think, a conversation that we had about back about the logo. It was, you know, I wanted to, I, I wanted to dig in and tweak and, and, and like, mm, maybe, you know, maybe I don't have to do that. Maybe I don't have to be a hundred percent in control. I can leave some of the control up to these people that I paid to do it. Right. Yeah. Good. Any, any success stories, you know, your site hasn't been up very long, has it? No, no. We only officially launched yesterday, but it's been up for about a week or a week and a half. In, um, any feedback, success, plan your event. Yeah. It's funny. We, we, um, the very first day it went up, um, the, 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 my, the company didn't, didn't send me an email to let me know that it had been done. Um, so I checked on it early in the morning and, oh, it's up. Great. Let's start testing these forms. So we were testing back and forth, making sure all the different forms uh, on the site work and, you know, that, that I was getting the emails from them. and bang, less than an hour after being live, we get a real one. <laughs> and I had to call them. I said, wait, did you guys fake this one? Did you, how could somebody <laughs> have found the site and already submitted a form? But yeah, it was a legitimate uh, submission and it, and, and it was a legitimate opportunity. Right. Fantastic. You know, I, I got a similar story when I, when I launched my, my new website and I have a contact form where you can actually schedule an appointment right. via my website. And somebody, I mean, the first day, you know, the first day we were live, I got an appointment. So it's like, I called the web developer and said, Hey, yeah, it's already working. That's great. Um, and the other thing that I got was, uh, because my job, my website now did a much better job of branding and, um, talking about what it is I do for people instead of what it is that I do. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of the same things my clients are guilty of. I was talking way more about how I do things and not enough about what it is I do and the new website, much more of a what site. I had people calling up and saying, I want this. They were using words off my website. I had one guy called up and says, hi, Tom, you don't know me, but I want to love my business again. And that's nice. something that was lifted right off the website because that was a value proposition. So um, it's amazing. If you get the professionals to do this for you, you know, the outcomes are amazing. So well, well done. Thank you. All right. Um, if you'll hang out and hang with me, um, I'm going to um, go through some more content and feel free to pipe in and make some comments because it will, well, it's, it's stuff that you've just been through. So you may have, um, may have some, some comments or something to add to this. All right, here we go. Um, so I had some questions sent in, which incidentally, some of them align with what we're talking about. Uh, one of them is press releases. And actually, Matt, I think this is your question. <laughs> and he says, I'm oh, being yeah, advised. It is. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, I am being advised to write a press release. I'm announcing our new website, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think I'd rather get some 
people to the site by writing some original content on social media, linking to the site. What do you think? Is there a value in a press release? So what is it you think a press release is that, that told you you didn't want one? This is, you know, this is just me in my bubble. That's what it is. Yeah. It's like, well, this sounds stupid. Like, who cares that, who really cares that I launched a new website? Like, shouldn't I just announce it on Facebook and then be done with it? Ah, okay. But, you know, you, you know, you convinced me and I, we did a couple edits and then I had, you know, we distributed a press release the other day and we'll yeah. see if anything comes of it. It'll get you, well, you'll get some traffic. You know, it used to be press releases were how we got news and press releases predate, you know, the internet, obviously. They've been around for, for hundreds of years. And back before we had web presences, we'd actually get press releases in the mail or later on in the fax machine. Um, and that's how you could announce things. Um, so the, the idea of a press release is old fashioned, but the, the application today is much different. It's, it's all electronic. Um, it's, it's all about pushing information out through different web vehicles. And it's other people helping you push information out they're providing information which drives traffic to their website, which helps them sell ads. You know, so there's this whole, you know, circle of life thing going on with media and money um, that you can figure out. So here's, here's what we need to know about press releases. So if you've got that old prejudice about a press release being, well, who gives a, you know what? Um, it's just a blog post. Just think of it as a blog post. Okay. It's just a piece of thing you can put on your website, but, in issuing press releases, you're going to send it probably as a Word doc or fill out a form on some other site. You know, a, a, we used to call them magazines. They're now e-publishers. Um, most of them have forms for accepting press releases or you email something to the editor and they'll process these for you. Um, so you're going to build it in a Word doc. I'll show you some structure in a minute. You're going to have a link that goes to the landing page on your website with, guess what, the press release. So now they're on your website as well where they can go learn more about you. Uh, and you can, you can press release about just about anything, you know, employee hire, you know, a new product, anything that you would put in a newsletter as an announcement. A press release is probably a better vehicle for it if, you, if it's something that's going to help your brand, um, help market you, help people understand or notice you. Um, if you have a new piece of intellectual property, a new product, you know, if you've accomplished something, you know, you, you did structure at the, you know, inaugural events, you know, that's something that you probably would talk about. Um, I got a press release today um, from well, another client of mine, GoVision, who does the LED screens at the inauguration and has for several inaugurations. So, you know, that's, you know, you want to toot your own horn, here's how they did it. So lots of good reasons to do a press release. And the structure looks like this. Now, you can Google press release structure and you'll get all the templates you ever want. It's real simple. Um, you're going to give a suggested title. The editor that you submit to may alter the title. But if you suggest a title, basically they're lazy. They're going to use it. So make sure the title encourages people to learn more. Send your company logo. They may or may not use it, but at least they have it. And they're looking for ways to make your announcement more attractive. Pictures pull people in. So if you don't have a photograph with a press release, at least the company logo is going to pull people's eyes in. Um, you're going to have four paragraphs or four sections. Section one, company name announces and explain what you're announcing straight terms. This is basically the above the break it tells me most of what I need to know and whether I'm interested, I can click include a landing page link in that piece so that somebody can see, can click on that and go straight to your page without reading the rest of the press release. Um, second paragraph, talk about, so you've made the announcement. Now provide an insight or a third party quote from a customer or user or partner about why this announcement is important or what does it mean to the industry or whatever it might be. Section or paragraph number three is somebody at your company, CEO or other key player, quoting about this. So I got two quotes, third party validation, coming from the kingpin, and then the final thing is the about thing. And we've seen these before. And it would say, you know, Event Tech is a, a, a event engineering company in Baltimore, Maryland, and we do these things, blah, 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 blah. 
it's boilerplate. You'll use it over and over again and slip a photo in. It's that simple. I mean, it's 250 words, folks. Um, it's not that hard to do. Um, so the ex next question I would probably get is where do I send that? Um, I've, if you, many of you got, well, everybody on this call should have gotten an invitation uh, for the Stimson Group library, a digital library. And I believe one of the content pieces I have on there is a list of press release contacts that you would use for the live events industry. It's basically the three main publications and a couple of websites. It's probably all you need to know to get started. Plus, since there's a blog post, you can share it on your Facebook page or via LinkedIn or however else you want to do it. Plus, you can drop it in the newsletter. Um, you can get your employees to like it or share it on their Facebook or LinkedIn pages. Um, get a little bit of traffic on it. Um, so, um, any how did how else did you share besides did you send it out to the the press or did you just treat it as a we we did we did we used your list plus um, we work with someone who helps us uh, locally who has a local list okay as well local news organizations so you went to a, a PR a PR firm yes. basically okay yeah and PR firms will do distribution on on targeted lists fairly inexpensively um, so good good well done. Um, another question we had here, which Matt, you may not have any input on at all, but this is a, a low ball switch question. And this was more of a, actually, this is more of a comment than a question. Um, he said, <laughs> he says, I've found the customers are now using our expertise and ideas against us. They take your ideas and they go back to low ballers and request an upgrade to their base price. It's happening more and more across the board. What defense do we have against this? And I think we can all agree, where has this guy been? <laughs> I mean, this has been going on for years. Um, so he's talking about the phenomenon of customers getting a quote from you and just using the information, the ideas that you shared or the, the design you threw together and going back to another supplier and saying, hey, take that lowball quote you gave to me and add these things to it. What would that cost? Um, and getting a low, getting low ball plus. Um, so this isn't new. Um, this falls very much on the, on the whole, um, you know, sales, um, training that I've done for years, the qualify position and close. So let me reiterate some of that. Um, first of all, step away from the RFP. Um, RFPs are there. The, the whole intent of an RFT, RFP is to favor the customer and sometimes not really scrupulously. So, um, when you receive an RFP, an unsolicited RFP, don't make the mistake of saying, woohoo, we got an RFP for April, we're going to save the month, because um, that's the whole counting your chickens before they hatch. Remember, an unsolicited RFP means the buyer didn't research you to find the best supplier. Okay? They simply found somebody to send an RFP to. If they had reached out to you and gone through the whole process of qualifying you and qualifying them, that's completely different. That's not unsolicited. Um, a, pers a pursued RFP is also suspect. So if you chase RFPs, um, which is an entire school of salesmanship in our industry, is people who simply go down the list of everybody who has a project and calling them and asking them to be put on the bid list which I think requires zero sales skills and no talent whatsoever. And you get what you pay for. Um, these are suspects. So if somebody gives you an RFP to make you go away, that's almost as bad as an unsolicited one. So only trust a prospect that does due diligence then offers an opportunity. In the more sophisticated sales groups I work with, we actually try and keep from asking the client for an RFP. We don't ask for business. We keep working on the client engagement until they're shoving it in our faces saying, well, can, hey, can you look at this? Hey, I love what you do. Take a look at this. Um, you know, that means that we've done our job and we've, we've made ourselves valuable to them and they want more. So step number one, step away from the RFP. Step number two, qualify. You've got to defeat price shoppers. Now, this is what the email is all about. So you have to qualify people. Here's some questions you can ask in the qualification process. You get an unsolicited RFP, just ask them, what brought you to us? 
and then shut up. Just listen. Listen to their words. If they don't have a good story about how they found you or why they chose you, okay, if all they say is, well, I got your name from somebody, that tells you a lot more than you might think. It says that you're nothing to them. Um, maybe follow-up question. What would be refreshing to find in a supplier? What are you looking for? Okay. When you compare suppliers, what qualities seem to be most important to you? And then the famous one is, other than a fair price, what's important to you? Don't ask all of these questions. You need two. You need one question and a follow-up. A good questioner, more importantly, a good listener, will learn everything they need to know about the qualification of this prospect from two questions. So step one, qualify. If we pass the qualification process, now we're in the positioning phase. All right, now we need to figure out where do we fit? How are we going to approach this client? How are we going to make ourselves more valuable than their alternatives? So what can we learn about this so that we can position ourselves properly for future conversations? Now, if somewhere along the line, perhaps in the first qualifying phase, we find out that price is a, a big issue and that, yeah, we're interested in all these things, but we're really price sensitive, it's okay to say, look, I, I don't know that I've ever earned business with a low bid. Are you interested in exploring why a company like ours tends to cost more? In other words, are you willing to invest some time and money with somebody who you would not hire based on your normal criteria? And sometimes that kind of catches them off guard and they say, well, I mean, are you sure you can't be competitive? <laughs> they said, no, I'm always competitive. I'm just not cheap. Um, I like this other question. We take a lot of care in putting together proposals. Is this a project that you can work with us to develop a better solution? In other words, can we ditch your RFP and actually talk about what you need to get done? So find some questions that will help. One, it's a further qualification, but two, it's giving you an angle that's different from the RFP in order to approach. The second step of this, um, you know, going in the positioning phase is, is the value proposition and introducing your value proposition. An easy way to do this is start with the phrase, here's what our best customers tend to choose. Here's how our best customers like to work with us. You know, here's what our best customers ask us to do at this point. You're putting it in customer terms. You're not saying, here's how we work. <laughs> you're saying how other customers work. And by the way, you're more than willing to give them names of other buyers for references that they could go talk to. And then you could say, and this is the value proposition thing to get away from price. You say, hey, we're sensitive to price, but it's really fourth on our list of priorities. Can I share the top three priorities that we have with you? Now you have a chance to talk about your manifestos. And if you were on the executive call earlier, you understand that a manifest, manifesto is a brand statement. It's a brand promise. These are the things that we passionately believe in. If you cannot introduce your passion as an organization into the conversation by this point, there's really no reason to move, for, move forward. You haven't done your job as a salesperson or business development person. In all of this, it's very important to not talk about the how and talk about the what. Okay, well, if we're going to put value in customer terms, how we do things is not valuable to the customer. The, what the things that we do do for the customer is important. So don't talk about methodology with prospects. It's too soon to talk about methodology. If they're asking methodology questions, the proper response is, help me understand why that question is important right now. Okay. Don't you also need to understand that we are qualified to do this business and why? And we have all the time in the world to talk about methodology later. Or I can give you examples about methodology, but then we pivot to talking about outcomes. How can I introduce you to the team? You know, I'd love to talk about methodology. Here's who I would bring to that meeting. Who in your organization would join that meeting to make sure it's productive for both of us? Okay, these are all good pivots that will get us talking about outcomes. And by the same token, we're taking that bow tie effect and we're turning it into a diamond getting from the one-to-one -to, -one to the many-to-many -many conversation. Stories are a very good way to talk about what. You know, 
I, I, I used stories a lot when I was selling in the early days because most of back, back when I was selling in the eighties and nineties, um, people wanted to talk about price. Um, technology was important. And so we used the changing technology as a pivot point. And when the client talked about price, we switched it to a better result. And in other words, I would take the methodology that we use that was different from other people and explain how that delivered a better outcome rather than falling into the trap of talking about price. Uh, tell a story about a client that learned the hard way that a yes on job side is important. So we're more expensive. What you're buying is yeses. Okay. When you buy on price, you're buying no's. Um, think about what happens on job site. We all have those stories. So these are some great tools and thoughts that you can share. Anybody have any questions or comments? Matt, you're going to pipe in? No, you're going, it's Friday, Tom. I'm trying to go. <laughs> all right, let's talk about client testimonials. And, um, and I think we'll be about ready to wrap up. I think this is the last one. I got an email said, I'm recording my first client testimonial in my office next week. I've never done this. Should this be a case study or just a testimonial? What do I ask in order to get a good result? This is, this is the right question. This is an ideal question. Um, thank you for sending it. As a matter of fact, I think the person who sent it is actually on the call. Yeah. All right. So to get a great testimonial, um, you're going to sit down, whether it's you're interviewing the client. You know, Matt, you use the salesperson to interview the client. I tend to use somebody else, if I possibly can, somebody that they don't have a relationship with, so that they find that they're explaining to a person who doesn't know either party. I find that works well, but we don't always have that luxury. So ask the person to introduce themselves, do their name, their title, their company. And this is really for logging purposes. If you're doing a lot of testimonials, it's, it's a, it helps whoever's doing your editing know what they're working with. Um, it also helps the person speak. It gives you the sound check. It gives them a chance to say something and start to get comfortable in all of this. And if they struggle with it, make them do it again. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's do the retakes on things that aren't really important. Then ask some questions. You can write different questions than these, but you can say for most of you, it'd be tell me about your project. What was your biggest challenge? You know, when you went out looking for a supplier or trying to find a partner, what was the challenge that you were most concerned about? What was on your mind? Let them talk. Just sit there. Be quiet. You know, look at your next question. Sometimes they've answered your next question, so you don't have to ask it. Ask them why they called this company what was attractive about their solution. And what you're looking for in all of this are the sound bites. So let's think about what the ideal testimonial is. The ideal testimonial is, man, we were really concerned about this event. Um, we were scared to death about safety and our liability issues were, um, we didn't know who to ask or who to talk to. And then I found this website and I talked to Matt and Matt made us feel better. Um, his team designed it. I didn't have to worry about it. The attendees never knew all the things that were going on in the background, which was fantastic. They only focused on our message. Our outcome was great. We actually raised more money than we thought we were going to raise. That's a testimonial. Ask the questions that will get people to say things like that. So a question you might ask is, what was the impact of the solution on your event? How did this, why was this event better than other events that you've done? What would a, if we had interviewed attendees as they were leaving, what would they have said? Get the sound bite. Okay. You don't need a 10 minute testimonial video. You need 90 really awesome seconds of fast cut sound bites that are positive. Um, Ask them for things, you know, again, we're all trying, we're trying to prompt the sound bites of someone in your position. We're considering suppliers. What would you tell them about this company? Now they're going to say your company name and something nice. Okay. And if they don't say that was fantastic, could you say that again? Could you say event tech is, and that thing you just said, they'll do it again. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to all be candid and off the cuff. Um, it can be produced. So I'm um, asking questions about what it was like to work with a specific person is always valuable. I say that because my testimonials that I'm looking for are typically about me. So I want my name mentioned, uh, but you might have a sales representative or an owner or somebody who needs to be mentioned in your testimonials. 
it's a great way of personalizing um, your promotion. All right. Hang on here. Look, I've got another slide. Do I not have another slide? That just doesn't sound like me. There we go. All right. If you're going to do a video case study as opposed to just a testimonial, here's the structure. You've got five parts. You talk about the challenge. Okay. In other words, here's the background. Here's the problem we were trying to solve. Talk about the solution or the intervention. Um, if you're going to do a client testimonial, it would help to have the client talk about this and then have a representative of your organization talk about it and then edit the two together. Okay. Think, of, think about how you might see a newsreel work. So the client talks about the challenge and then one of your people talks about the challenge. Talk about the solution and the intervention. Talk about results. That's where you want to spend most of your energy. Talk about the impact. Cut a few images of the event in if it's an event or an installation. Then you want that testimonial statement. We don't need the whole 90 seconds that we shot as a standalone testimonial. We just need that phrase. We need that sound bite about the testimonial statement. And then there's the call to action. Now we can't always get our subject to create the call to action, but sometimes you could say, you know, what would you tell somebody in your situation? And they're going to say, well, call Matt. Okay, that's a call to action. Now you got a place to put Matt's phone number, put the website name, finish the call to action. This is now a standalone piece. It can go on your website as a case study. Um, it can go on your YouTube page. It can be shared on your Facebook. This is a standalone piece that ends with a promotion. Um, you know, very, very powerful stuff. So <sighs> notes to videographers. Everybody knows two jobs, right? There's an video or there's an audio. I learned this the hard way. Get 15 seconds of silence in the room. Just ask the person to sit there quietly for 15 seconds while you record. It comes in real handy later when you're doing editing. You want B-roll. B-roll is great. You need, we get tired of just staring at a talking head the whole time. We want to get an establishing shot of maybe your building or perhaps their building or the event. Um, we want to see the interviewee maybe doing interactions with other people. We want to see them from different angles so that we can change it. We can do a one camera shoot, but we're going to go ahead and shoot the other angles so that we have something to, to cut in and out of. Um, get some candid B-roll. Just, just have an informal conversation with two people and catch them talking, and we can, we can take the voiceover above that. So there's lots of things you do. It gives your editors a lot of choices. It makes the video more dynamic and professional, and it doesn't take any time at all. Just make sure you send a list of expectations to your videographer, especially if it's somebody who doesn't shoot these for a living. All right. So... We're about out of time here. Any more questions? Matt, you got any comments on testimonials from your experience? Um, we use a very similar set of questions mm -hmm. and, and got great results the, the, the first time. Uh, the second and third ones went really well, too. So we're kind of we're sticking with it. It's like four or five questions. Um, but I definitely want to start catching some B-roll and some candid stuff, too. So those are, those are great tips. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, I look forward to seeing the more testimonials showing up on your website in the months to come. So, all right. Um, just a reminder, hey, I do other stuff, actually, you know, consulting and things like that. So check out my website. Give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. And, of course, um, this will be available archived uh, later on today. You'll be able to pick it up on uh, the archive page that we use for the survival call. And it's also going to start being populated on the digital library so you can find it there as well. So we're, we've got a lot of fun coming up with the library. Um, I'm looking forward to more of you trying that out. Matt, I want to thank you again for joining me today. This made it a lot more fun and interesting. I hope you had a good time. I did, definitely. And thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for the help. You're welcome. Great job on the website. Thanks. All right, everybody. Uh, that's a wrap. It's a weekend. Um, you have my permission to go home early. There you go. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.